incandescent lamp, normally heating of a tungsten up to about 2500 degrees C, uh, it works. And you can, you can see here, the only 50% of energy applied to incandescent lamp is radiated in the power range. Because you are more concerned, means that in, 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 in this case, only 50% of light you are getting in the power range. Others are, you can see that the 75% is between infrared at 850 to 2700 and remaining is between more than 2700. So, but we are more concerned about the power range. So, only the in incandescent lamp, only 15% of light we are getting. From the uh, spectrum, you can see that the, the different color we discussed that the, depending upon the types of uh, light source we are using, uh, uh, the, uh, the depth of the uh, means the how much it is red, green and different portion is there. So, it, it, it is clear from this picture. This is a picture of incandescent lamp. Infrorescent lamp, it is works on the low pressure mercury vapor in the, uh, it produces light from the excitation of low pressure mercury vapor in the, in mixture of inert gas. Here it, as I told you that depending upon the light source, in, because it works in different way. So here you can see that the, from the, this picture you can see, if you compare with the, your uh, incandescent lamp, the, from this spectrum you can see that between 400 to 700 the peak of the different color is different and this is the picture of the uh, fluorescent lamp discharge lamp, lamp is more efficient in comparison to both uh, the in, in comparison to other two and here also different types of uh, uh, discharge uh, lamps is there that works on the discharge principle metal halide is there, high pressure sodium is there. If you can see from this picture that in metal halide the different peak is there, like for yellow, green, a different type, uh, 400, between 400 to 700. But in case of high pressure sodium, you can see. So it becomes the most popular lamp type for commercial supplement lighting in horticulture. They are the most efficient in the power range. As I told you that when you are using the artificial light, we are more concerned about the its spectrum means the in power range which part is getting more predominant right means the suppose that you are using artificial light how much it is light you are getting in power range okay apart from power range in power also which part of light the plant is getting it is getting more red or more blue so we have depending upon the, your crop requirement it will depending upon your light source it will vary okay it is picture you can see from the picture a uh, high intensity uh, uh, discharge lamp metal halide lamp and high pressure sodium lamp is there here in table 4 you can see that the depending upon your light source uh, its efficiency is different for different light source and its average life is uh, average life is different also you can see that the depending upon your uh, for artificial illu illumination uh, light requirement in case of tomato uh, if you are using uh, uh, supplement lighting daily duration is between 12 to 24 hour and irradiance is given the how much irradiance is required here in table 6 you can see the general uh, climatic condition is given for the day or night or what is relative humidity and and light here you can see the you are measuring light in terms of lux lux means the light you are seeing means that using the lux meter you can measure the uh, light intensity okay so for tomato you can see that the day temperature night temperature is given uh, rh is between 50 to 65 and light intensity is between 50000 to 60000 lux if, if you compare the tomato and capsicum or cucumber also the you can say the broadly the temperature range is more or less same here you can see that the optimum uh, temperature optimum rh and uh, photosynthetic photon flux density is given but in last table we discussed about the lux, lux intensity that is used to measure by the lux it normally by lux meter you, you will able to measure the light we are seeing that is visible light okay but in in photo in in, in your crop crop growing you are not concerned more about the your uh, uh, visible range you are more concerned about the power range means the 400 to 700 nanometer as we discussed that we can measure the uh, your power range uh, light intensity so here you can see that for tomato it is uh, temperature is given optimum rh is given but here the it is between uh, 400 okay but here you are giving it is very important to uh, note that, that that here you are using light intensity in terms of lux but here we are using the micro mole per meter square per second okay and how to control the light intensity because normally depending upon your season in winter as i told you that here if you compare in the kake or in rachi 
uh, the light intensity is more or less perfect for the tomato and capsicum but if you, as you move to already you discussed in earlier classes but in summer light in intensity is very high so how to control your light inside the greenhouse there are different way we can control the light uh, uh, light inside the if light is low you can go for artificial lighting if your cost permits but if light is very high how to reduce the light intensity for that the different ways there normally people application of external setting compounds normally people use to use to paint the, the tops top of the your greenhouse okay by white paint and different uh, chemicals is there so that will reduce the light intensity and apart from that that, that is temporary because during the uh, semi permanent nature during the rainy season it wash out okay but the, certainly it, it will affect the quality of uh, in later crop it will affect the quality of your uh, colliding material apart from that you can install the shading skin on the top of the greenhouse and inside the greenhouse but the problem if you're putting on the top also uh, 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 it, it, it cut the light two times means the first light is passing through the, your your set net material setting a screen and again it passing through cladding material okay but if you're pushing inside the because light is going inside and then because all already if light is going inside certainly it will hit the greenhouse and again it is passing through the set night set net material so the the different challenges are there different uh, challenges are there here so for that already we discussed that for summer season detachable for summer season we have developed the detachable roof greenhouse or temporary set net structure if you want to grow uh, uh, if you grow, want to grow round the year then you can use the detachable roof greenhouse or uh, you can use the your temporary set net structure you know what is the humidity uh, as i uh, hum what is humidity it is the amount of uh, water vapor in per kg of dry air means the suppose that in this room in per kg of dry air how much water vapor is there for that you can calculate if you know the what is uh, water vapor pressure in this room at this temperature then you will able to calculate what is humidity and this percentage humidity means the at particular temperature at particular temperature we can if you able to saturate this air in this room then that 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 is your saturated humidity so percentage humidity is h by hs means the actual humidity divided by your humidity as saturated condition and you know what is relative humidity relative it is very simply you can define the it is the ratio of parcel means the ratio of parcel uh, parcel pressure of water vapor in the air to parcel vapor water vapor in saturated air means the as in case of here we discuss h by hs means the what is the actual humidity in this room divided by saturated condition so at the actual humidity at that time what is your vapor pressure of water okay and at the saturated condition hs what is your vapor pressure of water vapor so it is pw by ps and certainly if you know the pw uh, and p, uh, p uh, you know the p, p w and p s then you so if you have rh value so you can calculate also percentage humidity also why the relative humidity is important you know uh, because it creates the in the inside the greenhouse it creates the vapor pressure difference due to vapor pressure difference already discussed uh, earlier also because due to vapor pressure difference between your uh, leaf and the air okay so at the suppose that at particular temperature your relative humidity is 50 percent and the um, tomato crop any crop is there so what is vapor pressure di difference between your leaf and air that due to that due to vapor pressure difference your uh, it transpire right so vapor pressure dif difference plays a very important role in overall the biological activity of plant from this picture you can see that the as the in greenhouse air is the 75 percent average and you have assumed that the leaf is 100 percent average okay you can see as the temperature increases the vapor pressure difference is increasing certainly because it affects as i told you it affects the transpiration and indirectly it affects the because due to vapor pressure difference your stomata stomata in the stomata the pores in the leaf okay so depending upon the what is the vapor pressure it it, it will affect this opening and indirectly it will affect the photosynthesis apart from that the growth and quality of plant will also affected by the relative humidity so it is very important to maintain the relative humidity inside the greenhouse structure the control of rh in the greenhouse there are different factors are there like the humidity in greenhouse is the result of the balance between the transpiration of the crop and soil means the transpiration condensation of 
uh, of the greenhouse cover and vapor loss due to ventilation means the suppose that during summer if i open the ventilation it will air air will be mixed so the controlling of rh is different difficult in comparison to the because in summer the condition is in summer you are using a cooling system okay that will also affect your uh, rh condition and and during winter uh, during winter because if you are during winter or during rainy season suppose that during a rainy season rh outside is very high so certainly if it will affect the outside rh will also affect the inside rh depending upon the how you have closed the your ventilation ventilation of the greenhouse for controlling the greenhouse inside the greenhouse they are passive and i already have discussed that the the passive active method for the greenhouse heating or cooling is there same way they are passive and active method of greenhouse uh, 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 controlling the rh is there like in passive means they are not using any uh, external energy so ventilation by like in in house in room also what you used to do you open the suppose it is more humid and the inside the room then you open the your window so due to ventilation or apart from that setting temperature control you can you can by by you can control the rh inside the greenhouse apart from that active uh, active method is there humidification in also in greenhouse also it is very important humidification means you are adding moisture inside the greenhouse dehumidification means suppose that if, if humidity is low you want to increase the relative humidity inside the greenhouse so for that it is humidification means you humidify in dehumidification suppose that if relative humidity is very high suppose that it is 90% so you have to remove suppose that you want to reduce the relative humidity then that is dehumidification what so suppose that if you are using misting fogging inside the greenhouse that will certainly add the uh, water vapor uh, moisture inside the water vapor inside the greenhouse environment apart from that whenever suppose that you are using the uh, cooler okay in summer summer time you have filled that uh, that due to because you are using the cooler it apart from cool, uh, reducing the temperature it adds water vapor, uh, moisture inside the room so it certainly it will increase the relative humidity inside the room apart from that dehumidification is there so different methods are there like the desiccation desiccant dehumidification I mean that also works on the solid or liquid base so basically what you used to do it you pass the air through the dehumidifier and that works in a different principle and then you pass the dehumidified air inside the greenhouse now we'll discuss about the co2 you know that in open that a, the co2 plays very important role in photosynthesis this is very basic thing you, you know very well but in open field you cannot increase or decrease the because in open air the your co2 is the 300 ppm so uh, it is higher level of co2 you know very well that by in higher level of co2 have been absorbed to significantly con contribute to higher yield but in op in open field it is very difficult to increase the uh, co2 concentration okay but in polyhouse it is it is possible that when what is happening in polyhouse in, in the greenhouse enclosed air may have the co2 concentration of 1000 ppm because of what is happening in greenhouse normally suppose that during winter season you have closed all the ventilation so during night due to respiration co2 concentration increases so during morning in early morning up to 10 or 12 uh, pm the CO2 concentration is higher than the, your open field uh, 300 ppm. So this this contributes to your higher photosynthetic uh, photosynthesis. But depends upon the moisture, temperature, and other parameter, relative humidity also affects. So if the other parameter is, is conducive, increasing the your CO2 up to certain level, you will increase the photosynthesis. But in that case also, you have to think about the cost as you discuss about the artificial light and RH also. There are various factors that affect the your CO2 uptake. You know very well that radiation intensity, wind velocity, and the plant species variety, and the resistant to CO2 diffusion through the stomata. There are various factors that affect, apart from that, other factors are there that affect the CO2 uptake by your plant. In picture, you can see that the in, in figure number 19, you can see that in greenhouse, as I told you, during, during early hour, the CO2 concentration is high and this is the 300 ppm outside you can see and after after 12 pm it decreases okay because the if if, if the uh, sometime it happens the concentration of co2 inside the greenhouse is lower than the outside so you have to take care about that thing that the concentration should not go uh, below the 300 ppm Be because what happens the your plant is taking co2 but the desired amount of, suppose that during winter you have closed okay so that, that much co2 is not air is not coming from outside it 
you know that already we discussed the various factors that depending upon your uh, different types of petroleum uh, intolerant species, it, depending, uh, it affects your CO2 and light intensity also affects. So, depending upon the which type of variety you are using, it will affect the CO2 uptake. Apart from that, in figure 21, you can see that the as you are increasing the your light intensity, it it is increasing the, your uh, photosynthesis and at the uh, and at the particular uh, as you, uh, means the uh, if you are increasing the light and other conditions are suitable that is increasing the your photosynthesis. Water stress also affect the you can see from the this picture for sunflower that how the at particular radiance means that at particular light intens intensity how the your water uh, uh, water stress is affecting the. Uh, uh, CO2 uptake. There are different, uh, the, as you discussed that the CO2, uh, by using the CO2 enrichment means the artificially, as for light, if you give the artificial CO2, then depending upon if all the parameters uh, are in, in, in the range, it will affect your photosyn photosynthesis. This CO2 concentration drop below the atmospheric level whenever the CO2 consumption rate by photosynthesis is greater than the supply rate through the greenhouse vent. Already I discussed about this. And for each crop, the certain range is there. Means the up to that level, if you, if you increase the CO2 and other parameters are suitable, then it will increase your photosynthesis. But the optimum CO2 enrichment depends upon the margin between increase in crop value and cost of providing. Means the as, a, as for the light also, means the suppose that if you artificially providing enriching the your atmosphere uh, CO2, then you have to also take into account the how much cost you are incurring for that and how much additional yield or, or the crop you are getting. So cost economics is very important. There are various advantages are there, already we discussed that increase the growth rate and bio, bio, biomass production. Apart from that, disadvantage is also there. Means the higher CO production cost, with the, because if you use the CO2, then, then it, it will increase, certainly it will increase the uh, your production cost. Apart from that, depending on which type of system you are using for the CO2 source, that incomplete combustion generates harmful gases like the sulfur dioxide, clean. So you have to also think that the, if you are using the uh, which type of source uh, for generating the CO2 you are using, because uh, that also generates the harmful gases. Apart from that, uh, depending upon which type of source you are using, uh, suppose that if you are using the your uh, uh, that the generator inside the greenhouse, it adds to the heat also. So you have to think about the cooling also. So there are different uh, enrichment methods is there that is for that the pure or you can say pure or liquid carbon dioxide gas is there. So refillable plant bottles or bulk storage vessel is there. If you use the pure source, that is ideal for the enrichment of the your CO for CO2 enrichment. Apart from that, combustion of appropriate fossil by burning the fossil fuel either with the with the small burner inside the greenhouse. Normally, uh, one source is your pure or liquid carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so in tank you can use okay liquid CO2 normally free from impurities because as I told you the impurities is very important means the your gas should be pure because that will affect your plant also and human life also. But if you're using inside the a small burner inside the greenhouse is the oldest and still most common method for the CO2 enrichment. What happens? The, such burners release heat and flue gases together directly in the greenhouse and for that if, if it is generating the flue gas, you can, the system is there to remove that flue gases also. But the major advantage is that normally it is used for heating, not for CO2 enrichment. If you are using the a small burner because as I told you, if you burn the, uh, your, uh, burn the uh, fossil fuel, it, it will increase the uh, your uh, temperature inside the greenhouse also. Uh, alternative method for flue gas CO2 is supplied by large burner con connected to, means the, you are using the uh, system outside the, outside the greenhouse and from there the, the CO2 is passed inside the greenhouse. Quantity of CO2, CO2 required for enrichment is the, uh, the amount of CO2 required for enrichment is some of the CO2 used by the plant, artificial, means the artificially you are using, enriching, and the loss of CO2 means the, depending upon the which type of cladding material you're using, certainly the, it, 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 there is a fil infiltration loss, okay? So if you add the, both the both the things, means the how much plant is required and how much CO2 you are giving inside the greenhouse, that is pass through the infiltration, so you have to add the both the things, then you'll able to know what is the quantity of CO2 is required for enrichment. And selecting the source of CO2, I already we have discussed so many things, the purity of CO2 is very important, cost of CO2, certainly the cost is very important because that you add it into the cost of cultivation, installation, investment cost, operating cost, means the what is operating cost, heat of combustion, means the heat produced by the by the combustion is in, also important, means the 
at one end you are getting the additional CO2, but if you are adding to the heat, then you have to think about the cooling of the greenhouse. Apart from that, the how much water vapor is it, it is adding inside the greenhouse. Then the, here the briefly, you can see the important climatic uh, factor influencing plant growth. You already have discussed, like the what is rate, what is role of light, temperature, relative humidity, what is uh, important for, and the range is given here. Air velocity, you know, air velocity in the greenhouse is an important factor since this should be because if the suppose that if air is extended still, the 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 CO2 distribution inside the greenhouse it will not, not informally and temperature distribution will uh, also not happen because they will localize some some temperature is very high, some your temperature is low, and RH is also will not inform. So air velocity in the greenhouse is an important factor since distribution of temperature and RH follows the air flow pattern. Okay, so uh, because the uh, suppose that plant is 8, 10 feet height, so in lower portion the humidity is high and upper portion the humidity is different. So if it is air velocity, if will, if if will, air velocity is if will, uh, air velocity is there, so what will happen? It will mix the uh, inform. It will mix the temperature dis distribution will also inform and more or less relative humidity. The, uh, relative humidity at different parts of the greenhouse will be more or less equal. So uh, normally in greenhouse between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 meter is the ideal condition. Uh, air velocity is required and air velocity will ever result in higher. If air velocity is more, uh, already we have discussed so many times. It, so what will happen? If replaced with the fresh air, so vapor pressure difference will be more. So water loss will be means the more transpiration will be there. Soil aeration, you know very well that the under water law condition, all the pores in this soil or soil, soilless mixture is filled with water. So oxygen supply is called almost completely deprived. So root cannot obtain oxygen for res respiration to obtain the activities for nutrient and water uptake. So due to this reason drip is more important than the, your normal conventional irrigation. What happens? It man maintains the, it, 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 due to drip the soil aeration is more perfect. Okay. So oxygen is also important means the in your soil uh, soil root zone. So uh, amount of, uh, if it is flood, so if it is totally waterlogged, so oxygen is not there, so it will affect your respiration also water logging due to lack of oxygen in soil causes death of uh, death of root ha root hairs reduces reduces absorption of nutrients and and water increases so, uh, so as i told you the proper uh, ratio of your water and your oxygen is very important in root zone so these are the factor and this uh, today uh, we discuss about the various factor environment factors these factors are very important and earlier also in your uh, plant physiology courses you have certainly um, here briefly you have covered and if you have any question um, like earlier I have told you you can contact me uh, I will try to uh, give you the an answer to any any of your query thank you thank you very much